Hello there. In this video we'll be looking at simplifying algebraic fractions by adding and subtracting. In these examples we'll look to create the same denominator for our fractions. We'll then add across the top or subtract across the top as the case may be. We'll keep the bottoms the same and we'll look to simplify our final answer if it's possible. So this first example we have an x over 4 plus an x over 5. Let's, um, let's turn these fractions so they have the same bottoms, the same denominator. Now we need the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5 so we need a number that 4 can go into and 5 can go into, the smallest one of those if we can, and that number is 20. So we'll turn both these fractions into something over 20, they're equivalent fractions that way. So whatever we've done to the bottom of a fraction we've got to do to the top, that's a rule for fractions. So on the bottom of the left hand fraction we have times by 5 to make 4 into 20, so we better do the same to the top, so we'll be timesing the x by 5 and creating a 5x. Whatever we've done to the bottom of the right hand fraction, in this case multiplied by 4, we'll do the same to the top of that fraction and we'll have 4x there. The next bit is to add across the top, so we'll get 5x plus 4x making 9x and we'll keep the bottom the same. So 9x over 20 is our final answer and that won't simplify down at all. In the second example we have x over 6 minus x, sorry x over 3 minus x over 6. Now the lowest common multiple here is the 6 itself. So we could turn both of them into 6. One of them is already a 6 but we'll turn the first one into a 6 as well. So we'll put them both over 6. To turn the first fraction into something over 6 we will have multiplied the bottom by 2. We'll do the same to the top creating our 2x. And the other fraction we already had a number over or a letter over 6 so we'll just keep that the same. Then we'll subtract this time across the top because there's a minus in between these two. We'll remember that x is actually 1x, that helps our brain a little bit. 2x minus 1x leaves us with 1x or just x and the bottom stays the same. x over 6 is our answer there. So step 1 is to, just to turn them so they've got the same bottom and then subtract across the top, keep the bottoms the same. In example 3 here, we look for the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6. Now you might be thinking that maybe that's 24, but actually 12 is the lowest common multiple there. It doesn't really matter if you turn them both into something over 24, but you'll just have some more simplifying to do at the end of the question if you do that. So if you pick the lowest common multiple, it goes a bit easier, a bit, bit quicker. So let's turn them both into 12. And uh, so we would have multiplied the bottom of the left hand fraction by 3, so we better do the same to the top. 3 lots of 3y is 9y. And on the second fraction we will have had to multiply the bottom 6 by 2. Better do the same to the top, creating 2y on the top of that fraction. We'll add across the top, 9y plus 2y is 11y. And we'll keep the bottoms the same. 11 over 12 is a simple fraction, so uh, we can't simplify that any further. Another example, they're bigger chunks of fractions here, but um, we can turn them into the same bottoms by getting the lowest common multiple of 5 and 2. The smallest number that 5 and 2 can go into evenly is 10, so we'll turn them both into a fraction over 10. Whatever we've done to the bottom, we've got to do to the top. We multiply the bottom 5 there by 2, so we better do the same to the top. Now when we do that, we can't just multiply that 2 by the A, it's got to multiply by the 2C as well, so it's best if we think of that as a bracket and the two, the front two expanding through the bracket for our uh, adjustment there. So we'll get 2 times a when we multiply here and then 4c when we've done 2 times the 2c. So we've got to be careful on the top there to make sure the whole of the top of the fraction gets multiplied by whatever we're multiplying by. The bottom of the right hand fraction we had to multiply by 5 so we better do the same to the top. Once again we'll treat it like a proper expansion there and make sure the 5 multiplies by the 3a to make 15a and by the minus c to make minus 5c. So make sure you do that thoroughly on the top there. Now we can add across the top we have 2a and 15a making 17a when we join up those two. And then for the next bit we have minus c created by having the 4c here, the plus 4c, 
and the minus 5c, we're taking away one more than we've got there, creating a minus 1c there. And that's keeping the bottom the same. We get 17a minus c over 10. Another example here, this is a subtraction one, we'll have to be really careful about that. Anytime you have a minus in front of a whole chunk of numbers or letters, we've got to be really careful about how we use that minus. So the lowest common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6, that's the smallest number that 2 and 3 can go into, so we'll turn both these fractions into uh, fractions over 6. We will have had to multiply the bottom by 3 in the first fraction, so we better do the same to the top. Once again, we'll be careful with the expansion here. 3 lots of 5a is 15a. 3 lots of minus 3 is minus 9. Now, when we multiply the bottom by 2 on the second fraction, we better multiply the top by 2. Now, we'll keep them as separate fractions uh, for this part, but then I'll show you a bit of a careful bit we have to do next. We'll make sure that, that 2 multiplies through both things on the top of that second fraction. 2 times 3a is 6a. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. Now for this next bit, we need to really put both of these uh, numbers, both of these fractions into the one fraction if we can. We have to be really careful with this second bit of the fraction here. So we want to be saying, okay, 15a minus 9 is over 6, but when we have a minus here, it's like we have a minus 1 expanding through these brackets here and we'll have to be really careful. So in, in order to collect like terms on the top here and simplify further, we have to sort of um, process this right-hand fraction a little bit here. So we get minus 6a when we take into account that minus and a really effectively a 1 that's invisible. Minus 1 times 6a gives us minus 6a. And then for the second bit, we have a minus 1, this is the bit we have to be really careful of, a minus 1 multiplied by a minus 10 which creates a plus 10 there. That's the bit that many students would get wrong if they rushed it. Now that creates um, a, a, a one big top of a fraction and we can put the whole thing over 6 there. That allows us to collect like terms. We have 15a minus 6a there and we can join the minus 9 and the plus 10 uh, because they're like terms as well, they're just normal numbers there. So we end up with 9a plus 1 when we combine those. And that's still over 6 for our answer. So that's a tricky one. Just slow yourself down and be really careful with this expansion over here uh, to create one big fraction, and then we can do a bit of simplifying after that. Okay, now this is a funny one. It's got some letters on the bottom here. Now, whatever the... Um, whatever the numbers were on the bottom of most fractions, we can get the lowest common multiple, or at least a common multiple, by multiplying those two together. If that was a 2 and that was a 3, we could make 6 out of it for our bottom number of our fraction. We're going to do the same sort of thing, even if the uh, expression is a little bit weirder. So I'm, going to here, I'm here going to show you that we're going to have x plus 1 times x minus 3 as our common bottom for our fraction, our common denominator. So we're going to have that plus another lot of that. So one way to get a common denominator is to take whatever's on the bottom of one fraction and multiply it by whatever's on the bottom of the other fraction. So we've done that really effectively. Then we've got to say to ourselves, okay, if we get this here, we started off with an x plus 1, we'll need to multiply that by an x minus 3 on the bottom, if we're going to create that on the bottom of this first fraction. So I'll have to do the same to the top. I'll have to actually multiply the top here by the bracket um, x minus 3. It's going to be pretty tricky there. We'll do that carefully and expand it properly. And so we'll get 2x minus 6 there. I'll have to do that carefully. 2 times x and 2 times minus 3 gives 2x minus 6. Now on the bottom of the right-hand fraction, we will have multiplied the bottom there an x minus 3 by an x plus 1. We multiplied x minus 3 by x plus 1. We've got to do the same to the top. This one's an easier job because there's a 1 on the top and 1 times anything is just itself, isn't it? So we just have x plus 1 on the top there. So if you've got uh, 2x minus 6 over, over that bottom and x plus 1 over that bottom, now we've got same bottoms and we can add across the top there. 2x plus the 1x there creates our 3x and we have minus 6 plus 1 gives us minus 5 and we can just write the bottom once there we've combined 
that into the one fraction. So pretty weird, but in the in the end we're still doing exactly the same thing as we're doing we did with the numbers, but just with the, the stranger, more complex expressions there. We created a same bottom, we did whatever we did to the bottom to the top as well, and then we added across the top and kept the bottoms the same. So in the end it's the same processes, just a bit harder. Okay, so let's just summarize now. To simplify algebraic uh, fractions by adding and subtraction, subtracting, sorry, we uh, first started off by getting the same denominator. Then we added or subtracted across the top, depending on the question, and we kept the bottom the same. And uh, we also looked to simplify any final answers if that was possible. So a few uh, tricky examples there. I hope they help, and you can replay the video if you're not sure. PeterBlakeMass.com. Thanks for listening. All the best.